of a math video. Yeah, and I like that. I do. And you know what I really like? I like that they're all, so far, we've been doing some chapter one videos here in fifth grade. We have algebra, and I love seeing that word, algebra, lesson 1.5. And whoa, look at this, bumblebee, whoa, like a close-up look at a bumblebee's body, his little, what are those little fibers, like his fur, do you call it fur? <laughs> it's, wow, pretty cool. Anyway, the topic today, my friends, is multiplication patterns, yay. Math's all about patterns, a lot of patterns. Anyways, we have our essential question. Our essential question is driving today's lesson. What is it we're going to learn? And it says, how can you use a basic fact and a pattern to multiply by a two-digit number? <laughs> I'm really, really looking forward to this. But you know, we can't do any of that. That's right. We can't even start. We can't even begin unless we unlock the problem. That's right, my friends, because it's real world, baby. Real world. Real world. Now, how close have you been to a bumblebee? Ooh, the actual length of a queen bumblebee is about 20 millimeters. And even though that seems small, 20 millimeters, boy, when they come around, they're looking pretty big, aren't they? And they're not like your regular bee. The photograph shows part of a bee under a microscope at 10 times its actual size. Wow, it's like a big magnifying glass. Poof. Now, what would the length of the bee appear to be at a magnification of 300 times its actual size? It's probably be pretty frightening if you ask me. All right, so let's take a look. It says use a basic fact and a pattern. Okay, multiply 300 times 20. And we're doing 300 times 20 because we know the actual size is 20 millimeters, right, from up above in the problem, and then it's gonna be magnified 300 times. And there it is. Three times two is the basic fact. Three times two is six. I know. Even a little cave boy or girl could get that one, Mr. Warren. And then we have 30 times two. So the added on is zero times two is equal to three times two times 10 to the first power, which is just times 10, which is equal to 60. Look how that worked out. That was nice. When we were able to take 30 and just say, okay, you know what, 30, that one zero just simply got added on to the end of our product. Okay, now we have 300 times two. Again, our basic fact, three times two, times 10 to the second power, because that's our 100 right there. That's matching up with this guy right here. So we're just gonna end up with our six here because three times two is six, and then two zeros. Notice my bumblebee color. Okay, I tried. Now we have 300 times 20, so the 300 didn't change. We still have our basic fact. We have three zeros, so we have 100 times 10. By the way, yeah, that's just 10 raised to the third power, which we have over here. And there's our six. Makes it so easy. 6,000. Woohoo! Yeah, yeah. Now, Math Talk says, uh, should I go over here? What pattern do you see in the number, sentences, and the exponents? What I'm starting to see is A, if you can just multiply that basic fact, that the only thing that's changing is just the exponents letting you know kind of how many zeros there are. I mean, that really is what that showed there. See, the 10 to the second power is like two zeros. That's true with when we're dealing with a base that is 10. Now, sometimes you could have a base that's four raised to the third power, and that would be completely different. But with a base of 10, which we're learning today, then you can see that comes in handy. Let you know how many zeros. I don't know. That's how I would answer that one. So the length of the B would appear to be about, well, now we know, 6,000 millimeters. Cool. So now let's look at this next question here it says what would the length of the bee shown in the photograph appear to be if the microscope shows it at 10 times its actual size so not the 300 times its actual size but just 10 times its actual size well its actual size was 20 millimeters was it not yeah i believe so 20 millimeters then times 10 well that's 10 to the first power too if we wanted to write it that way what's going to happen we're going to end up with, it's 10 times greater. It's just going to add on another zero. So it's going to actually be 200 millimeters, and it can be abbreviated as such. Okay, let's keep going. Example, use mental math and a pattern. Okay, multiply 50 times 8,000. Here's our basic fact. 5 times 8 equals 40. Simple enough. 5 times 80 that is going to be equal to 5 times 8 times 10 to the first power, which is just 10. So we end up putting on another 0, 400. And now we have 5 times 800. Okay, now we've added 2. 
5 times 8 is 40. We'll go ahead and put that down. 40. And then I have times 10 to the second power, which is 100, which is two zeros. So I end up with 4,000. Now I have 50 times 800. Again, same basic fact doesn't change. We have to be careful with these because it just so happens that this basic fact has a zero in it. Sometimes that can throw us off. 10 times 100, again, is equal to 40 times 10 to the third power. And the third power lets us know then we're going to have three zeros, three powers of 10, 40,000. Each time, though, it is increasing by one power of 10. Now we have 50 times 8,000, 40 again. And I'm going to jump all the way over here because I've been following the same pattern. Now I have four zeros, one, two, three, four. Now I actually have 400,000. I guess I could have moved him over a little bit. Oh, wow, dude, did you see that? Wow, it just like, it just moved over. Dude, I was like in my mind thinking, you know, it would be cool if it just moved over. And it just did. Whoa. Dun, dun, dun. Okay, so now we come to share and show. Use mental math in a pattern to find the product. Okay, so we've been learning how to use the basic fact. My basic fact is 3 times 4. 12, so easy. And I look at that, I have 1, 2, 3, 4 powers of 10. The way I look at it, so 1, 2, 3, 4. Look at that, 120,000. Wow, but so easy to do because we did the basic fact. So what basic fact can you use to help you find 30 times 4,000? Oh, I already mentioned that up there. 3 times 4, that was easy. Kind of did that one out of order. Now it says use mental math to complete the pattern. 1 times 1 equals 1. 1 times 10 to the first power is really just 10, so that's going to be 10. 1 times 10 to the second power is going to be 100, so it's 100. 1 times 10 to the third power is 1,000, so 1 times that is going to be 1,000. You can put a comma in there, but it is not required. 7 times 8 is 56, so here we go. Same thing, you're going to take that times 10, so we're going to add on a 0, 1 power of 10. And then I see 2, so I can do this. And finally, ooh, I have 56,000. There I do have to put the comma in. There it's optional on that number. 6 times 5 is 30. 30 times blank equals 300. 10. Because we're at one more zero, give me my 300. Okay, because 300 is 10 times greater than 30. And look at, these are all going to follow the exact same pattern. So it's just going to be times 100 times 1,000. See, isn't that nice? This is all the patterns in math. It's just, oh, I just love all these patterns. Explain how to find 50 times 9,000 by using a basic fact and pattern. Uh, we've been doing these problems, so it's pretty easy. You just want to take your 45, right? And then we have, in this case, we have one, two, three, four powers. Oh, I'm going to have to erase that. One, two, three, four, 450,000. Okay. I did it. Okay, let's do on your own. Oh no, we're on our own. Use mental math to complete the pattern. Nine times five equals 45. Wait a second. We kind of already did these, but it's like we're on our own. So I'm going to say 450, 4,500. Now I have 45. And then I have one, two, three, 45,000. I mean, if you have the power of 10, that's the easiest way to do these. 21. Now we have 210. 2,100, and 21,000. 20, you have to be careful with these because it already ends in a zero. So you need to make sure that you add on. So we have five times four is 20. We need one more, so we're gonna multiply by 10 to get that. They, they're they doing these reverse now on us. Five times four is 20. Then I'm gonna need times 100 because there's my 100, two of them, but my zero for the 20 is right there. Hey, where'd you come from? Unknown dot appears on screen. Hmm. Should I notify the authorities? <laughs> 5 times 420, then again. Oh, looks like we're going to one more. So we're going to go up to 1,000. Cool. Woohoo. Yeah, yeah. Okay, use mental math and a pattern to find the product. Okay, so we have 36 times 10, which is just 360. That's 28. We have three powers of 10, so that's going to be 28,000. Here we have 72, and then we have two powers of 10, making it 7,200. Here we have 12 basic fact. We have two powers of 10, 1,200. Now we have 10 plus three powers of 10. We end up with 10,000, 16 plus two, 1,600, 30 with three powers of 10, 30,000, 64, one, two, three, four, Ooh, 640,000. Here we have 56 with and 560,000. 
Now it says think smarter. Ooh, I've never seen the think smarter on the first couple pages of Go Math. Oh, strange. Okay, usually it comes on like the third page. But what does the product of any whole number factor multiplied by 100 always have? Explain. Okay, so let me think about this. So what does what does the product of any whole number factor multiplied by 100 always have? Explain. Okay, um, I'm not sure what they actually want me to write. Not supposed to, but what I'm thinking, always have? I don't know, it's always going to have two zeros. Is that what they're trying to ask? It's going to have at least two zeros? I would say any any whole number uh, factor multiplied by 100 will always have at least, and I say at least because, I'm going to show you an, exa an example, at least two zeros in the product. And the reason why I say at least because if you did take the number 20 times 100, because this would be a whole number, any whole number, multiplied by 100, here you're going to actually have yeah, two more zeros. You end up with 2,000. So it's important that you put at least two zeros in a product. Okay? I hope that's what they were looking for. Woohoo! There goes another math video, Mr. Wara. Yep. One more down. Well, I appreciate you coming along and visiting this lesson. I hope you found it helpful. Feel free to shoot a question or comment if you like. Yay, if you're not a sub yet of Mr. Wara's channel, hey, why not join? You know what the cost is? free. Hey, you can't be free. Not too many things free anymore. Not even water's free anymore, right? We have to pay for water. I remember when we were kids and we would always say, oh, well, water will never cost money. Yeah, that was a long time ago, Mr. War. You're really old. Yes, okay. I am very old. Okay, well, on that note, guys, I gotta tell you, it's time to say hasta la vista. Yeah, all right. My, my friends, live long and prosper.